Hey, what's going on, everybody? This is Chukunon Soap Captures, aka Mazi. Check on, check on, aka the photocosmetic surgeon. And we are back in Photo Lab again, and we're back for another YouTube tutorial. Shout out to all my clients out there. You are appreciated. Special thanks to all the lovely models and muses out there. You keep me inspired. We got one in the studio, Anya. Um, one love to all of my supporters on social media. You keep me going. She's another supporter on social media, so shout out to her. Okay, so today we are going to talk about RAW versus JPEG, right? So these are two um, camera file types, right? Uh, image types. So there's pros and cons to using either one, okay? Um, so the pros to using RAW are that it's a really big picture file. A lot of RAW files are about like 60 megabytes, right? Whenever you take the picture and um, what that does is that it allows you to have so much information contained in the picture file so that if anything bad happens during the shoot, like it's too bright or it's too dark, some of the pictures just didn't, uh, the composite, not the composition, but the exposure didn't turn out the way that you want, but the composition, like the way the model was posing and everything was like great and you're like, man, I really wish I could salvage this picture. If you shot it in RAW, you'll be able to most likely salvage most of it and bring it a lot of it back in Lightroom, right? You can, you know, just bring back the shadows, bring back the highlights, things like that. Now, um, the downside to this is because it's so much information to work with, it takes up a lot of space on your, um, your camera or on your laptop or on your Lightroom subscription, right? On the cloud. Um, so that's the drawback. So this is what you kind of have to balance um, along with using JPEG instead. If you shoot in JPEG, um, you get to store a lot more pictures on your devices than you would with RAW um, because the, small, the files are smaller. It's maybe about like 15 megabytes or something like that. But the thing is that um, you won't get all that information in your camera, or any, uh, not your camera, but any um, softwares can use to work with to restore a picture. So if the same thing happens, you take a picture, um, let's say the, uh, you're doing flash photography, which is what we're gonna demonstrate right now. If you're doing flash photography and the flash doesn't fire in one of them, but the model, you know, like Anya did like a really, really like amazing pose. And I'm like, man, I really wish I could bring that back so I could send it to her and show her how good she did on this shot. I won't be able to do that as well with a JPEG file, right? Because with that JPEG file, you have a lot less information and, um, you know, it just might not be as good for a client, you know what I'm saying, or a model for that customer service, that level of customer service, if you're not able to bring back those shots, you know what I'm saying? So I'm going to do um, a quick tutorial, like a flash tutorial and show you how if the flash doesn't fire in one of them, you're able to um, salvage the shot for the most part and um, yeah, basically bring back a lot of the detail in the picture. So it depends, you have kind of to balance it out um, with your, how much room you have in your Lightroom subscription, how much room is in your SD card, and figure out which, what's the right balance for you, how much works for you. I personally shoot in RAW just because, um, like all the time, because that's just the, the level of service that I, I need for my client base. But it might be different for you if you're just kind of doing this as a hobbyist um, for fun, if you're a photography hobbyist, or um, there's pictures that you know usually turn out well and you won't need to do a lot of heavy editing in Lightroom. All right, so without further ado, I'm gonna step into this, um, I'm gonna start doing this photography tutorial. I'm gonna show you an example of uh, the benefits um, of RAW versus JPEG, all right? So I want you to follow me.
All right, so welcome to my laptop screen. So um, here I have uh, some shots here, just like some example pictures that I got from the photo shoot. What I'm gonna do is just kind of uh, zoom in a little bit here where you can see what we're working with, okay? So Anya did a great job. And um, so I have two uh, pictures here. One that's in the raw format. This is a uh, .nef. So I think the N stands for Nikon. I use Nikon cameras. Um, and uh, I forget what the other, I don't know what the other things, um, the other letters stand for in this acronym, but it's .nef. It's kind of like Nikon's raw format. It's proprietary format. I believe the N stands for Nikon. Let me know if I'm wrong in the comment section below. And this is just a regular JPEG, pic JPEG picture. It's the same type of picture, but both of them um, were taken when the, um, the subject, she's underexposed. So the flash didn't fire. And this is kind of like that example that I was talking about where Anya did a really good job, um, really nice pose, really good picture. And I want to try to salvage this picture, right? So this is the NEF and this is the, the .jpeg here. And um, whatever camera you have, they probably have their own proprietary software. I'm not sure what it's called for Canon, but it's, you know, probably like a similar type of software. I think somewhere in the file name it does say RAW, but RAW just means whatever the camera software manufactures proprietary format, right? So, like I said before, this is a pretty dope picture, but let's say this is like the one picture that the client liked or... Uh, the model liked, but it just happened to be underexposed, right? So what you can do is try to salvage this as much as possible. It's best to shoot in raw format because this picture right here has a lot more data, has a lot more information in it that can be used to um, bring the picture back to life a little bit more um, than a JPEG file, right? And I'm going to demonstrate that now. So I'm going to go to filter and then camera raw filter, okay? Um, and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna try to bring up some of the, the shadows, right? I'm gonna hit this dial right here, the slider bar. And I'm gonna bring up some of the shadows. It's not going to look perfect, but it's essentially going to, you know, remove some darkness from the shadows. And since this type of picture file format has so much data in it, there's more, um, it just has more data to work with to remove shadows from while still leaving extra data to make the picture look nice. <laughs> um, it's probably the simplest way that I can put it, but in a JPEG format, so not raw, in the JPEG format, there isn't enough data there when it tries to remove shadows. So there's not enough data left over to keep the picture looking nice, right? I'm just going to just a quick, it's not going to be um, a, a very um, sophisticated edit. I'm just going to bring up the shadows a little bit here. Uh, you know what? I think the reason why I'm doing that is the reason why it's not doing anything is hit cancel. I think it's because I still have this saved as a background. So I'm going to go over here, background, and just let it be layer zero. And now I'm going to do camera raw filter. I don't think it likes it when I just do it on the background. It has to be a layer. So camera raw filter. Now let me try to bring up the shadows. And what I'm also going to do is bring up the exposure itself a little bit more. Right? So almost kind of add more light to the picture. So there we go. Look at that. So I can do the same thing in JPEG. Um, same settings obviously can be applied in JPEG, um, but I'm gonna show you how it looks in JPEG. See this picture doesn't look that bad. You know what I'm saying? It's not perfect. It's a, I can tell just from looking at it, it's a little grainy. The color correction isn't the best, but I can just come in here and you know work with these other settings and you know um, do other glamor touch-ups to make this picture look the way it you know, it should be, but you know, some people like just natural shoots like this. Anya might like this picture, you know what I'm saying? Or another model might like, you know, just a picture that's not heavily airbrushed. So I'm just gonna hit okay, you know? And so there we go. Now here's the JPEG. I'm gonna open that up and here's another underexposed picture, right? Um, underexposed picture. 
and I'm going to try um, the same thing. So I'm just going to make this a layer and then I'm going to go in and hit filter, uh, camera raw filter. All right. And I'm going to do the same thing. And you're going to see that it's going to have a similar effect, but see, look at that. There's, <laughs> there's kind of like this reddish tint everywhere. It's not really the nicest. You know what I'm saying? Um, just really not, really not the best, not the most gratifying. Um, it kind of looks a little pixelated, a little blocky. Um, you know, just not the best quality picture. You get what I'm saying? Um, really not the best, really not the best work here. So this is the JPEG picture, see? When, when I made all these changes, there wasn't enough data left over that the camera had to work with to still make the picture look as close enough to the original as possible. You see that big difference, right? I'm gonna hit the OK button to apply those changes and I'm gonna compare them, you know? So here, this is the JPEG. Uh, we tried to salvage the JPEG, right? And here's the RAW. Look at that. So which one would you prefer, JPEG or RAW? This is why I always shoot in RAW. You see that? Not, um, not really a tiny, tiny difference. There's a huge difference between the two. I mean, of course, I could try to go in and, you know, change the saturation and adjust this picture some. Um, but... I can tell just from looking at it that there's some color noise. Let me try to, let me zoom in to certain parts here. Uh, let me see if I can. Yeah, there's this, as you can see, right? There's definitely some color noise. See? Definitely some color noise, definitely some pixelation going on there. Not a lot of, um, there wasn't enough I'm trying to get to a place where there's like a lot of um, um, changes in the, uh, the textures and the colors. See, look at all the pixelation and the noise. And if I come to this picture and zoom in to a, the same section, there's some color noise. I mean, there's some noise, but it's just, it's not as bad. You see what I'm saying? Look at the difference between this picture and that one, right? So, that's just, uh, that's basically it. That's the tutorial for today. Um, that is, this is the reason why I always shoot in raw, but again, you know, it kind of depends on you and your, um, this is, you know, one less step for me to do, but it depends on the amount of storage space you have. It depends on, you know, how big your SD card is and, you know, some other things as well too. Or if, you know, if you know that your shooting technique or the type of shoot that you're doing is, um, so i guess um worry mistake free or worry free that you're never gonna have you know something like this happen where your flash doesn't fire because you know sometimes that happens flash doesn't fire or um you go from shooting um outside where it's bright and you go inside where it's a little bit darker and you don't adjust your camera settings like at a party or something like that and then you know you miss a moment you know what I'm saying? Because you didn't hit the right camera settings fast enough and something really cool happened on the inside where it was dark. But yeah, so this is the reason why I tend to shoot in JPEG. Uh, this is the reason why I tend to shoot in um, RAW because it just preserves a lot more, but it depends on you know how much storage space you have and things like that because it just gives you a lot more creative freedom in editing. All right, thanks guys. Thanks for watching. All right, so wasn't that fun? I hope you guys had as much fun watching this video as uh, we did making it for you. So um, please let us know what you think in the comment section down below. Um, what do you, so as you see, there was pictures that I was able to bring back to life um, and restore a little bit better that Anya took in like a really nice pose, right? And you would not have been able to do that in JPEG. So um, yeah, let me know which camera um, image file type you use more often and why you use it. Are you more of a raw person? Are you more of a JPEG person? What type of photography do you do? And other like um, just benefits to using one over the other in different shooting situations like flash versus 
outdoors really bright and might be blown out like the uh, the opposite of what we did today where it was like too dark right so um, please uh, like this video um, leave me a comment down below about what you thought about it subscribe to this um, YouTube channel and um, share this with a friend who might be into photography and um, hit the bell button to get a notification anytime I post a new video and you can hit Anya up on any of her social media um. yes, yes. <laughs> you can hit me up on Instagram at it's Anya four Y's. It's I T S A N four Y's A. It's Anya. All right. <laughs> Thanks a lot. We appreciate you being here, and we will see you in the next video. Thank you. Happy shooting, my friends. Take care.